All right, good evening again, everybody. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Before we go any further, I know Mr. Clark, Dr. Deacon Clark just prayed, but again, you know, we like to pray before we study. And so, especially looking at these end time stuff, need extra insight. So let's pray. Father, we come before you and we thank you for your word. It is beautiful. It has a lot in it that, uh, some of which is a little difficult to decipher, but nevertheless, we ask that your Holy Spirit will guide us as we continue to look at these judgments, and in particular the trumpet judgments, that uh, um, persons will be warned and uh, ready and make sure that if they trust Christ, they will not have to face this kind of judgment. And so if they are aware of it, then let decision be made before it is too late. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, my friends, last, this is today's Sunday, so last Wednesday, we were looking at the fifth trumpet, which is the demonic locusts. And, um, you know, Mr. Clark in his prayer said something I said, I'll use it to piggyback on a question. So we looked at the demonic locusts, and let's describe it a little. Demonic locusts that we saw is that it had a body of an, a horse, it had the face of a man, the hair of a woman, had crowns on it, breastplates, and it had the tail of a scorpion. And the scorpion tail had stings in it in order to um, torment the person for five months. And so it will sting them. Of course, not the people of God, but sting them and they will not die. They're going to look for death and death will escape. So the question is based on what Mr. Clark said in the prayer. He said, um, you know, we get to learn about you. What do you learn from something like that, a demonic locust about God? Just shout it out. That is great and mighty and powerful. You take everything, Miss Saul. <laughs> Anybody else? Great and mighty and powerful. What else do we learn from a demonic locust? Uh, that trumpet, that fifth trumpet. What else? Just shout it out. That God is just. Anything else? He can do whatever He wants. Anything else? Creative. Wonderful. He is a mastermind. Remember these locusts. You're saying something, Alex? Go ahead. That what? He's a leader. Okay. All right. All right. By the way, make sure that you have microphones to each side from now to make sure. All right, guys. Um, so wonderful. So so we learned that from 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 God. No. Before we get to the sixth trumpet tonight, we had a very robust, healthy discussion. Not a debate, but a healthy discussion about the size of the locusts. All right. And 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 I said there are no. There are no objections to what you may believe about the size because it really never told what the size is. All right? And some believe that the size could be as big as a horse, <laughs> while others, like myself, believe that it could be really the size of a locust or just a little bigger. So, what I decided to do was to check on what is, what is already existent. And I decided to Google, do a research on giant locusts. Because I don't believe that these locusts will be the regular size either. Right? And, and I did um, a research on giant locusts. And so, Pastor Evans, or Chris, whoever is running the... Look at some pictures here that I put together. All right, so this, this locust, this is, a, this, is, this is a man's hand, or a woman, whoever it is, but it looks like a man's hand to me. This is somebody's hand. All right, can you see it? Because one of the things that we were asking is, would we be able to see it if it is that small? All right, but we want to remember that what's going on now is social media. Once you take a picture of something, uh, it will be blown up. And even if it's as small as a regular locust, it will be seen. So the, the, can you see some of the details of the locust? All right. And by the way, this is not a normal size. All right. This is not a normal size. This is a giant locust. G give me another picture, please. Next picture. All right. This is a picture of three peculiar giant locusts that are attacking a snake. The locusts come in different sizes, shapes, and uh, colors and designs. All right. These are the, show you how locusts can be. <laughs> they, they, they are not always nice um, insects, you know. They are attacking the snake. And look at the colors of them. Can you see? 
Can you see the colors like almost they're very colorful, aren't they? All right. So this is what I'm saying. So whether the, the, the demon in locust is as big as a horse or as small as a hand, it will be seen. All right. Next, next picture. Next picture. And now this is a close-up of a, a giant locust, maybe as big as your hand. Can you see the detail there? All right. Again, we're not saying it, can, it, it can't be as big as a horse. I'm saying that if it, even that it is as small as a hand, it will be seen. Am I making sense? No, here is the clincher, Pastor Evans. Next picture. Next picture. No, this man, this man shot this giant grasshopper. Not a locust, it's a giant grasshopper uh, in 1937. All right? Wait. You see how big that thing is? That's huge, you know? That's, that's, the word, it's, that's an anomaly. That's a phenomenon. That is not usual. That's a big, that's a huge grasshopper. Look at the size of the grasshopper, the man holding it. Eh? So, my point is that the locust could even get as big as that. And if it gets as big as that, as, or as big as a horse, if it gets as big as this, it can still be seen. If it's as small as a hand, it will still be seen. We don't know the size of it. But it was in searching for giant locust. I came across this picture and I said to myself, is this a locust that big? No, it's a, it's a grasshopper. I said to myself, if I were outside and see a giant grasshopper this size coming, me lock my door and go inside and look to my window until it's gone. Me not lie to you. Me not afraid. Because you're used to a dog this size. You're used, but you're not used to grass up. Can you imagine if you see a scorpion this size? But it's not impossible. Because there are always anomalies. And, and so, the largest locust that has gone on record was found in New Zealand by a man. He never took a picture of it. But it was 22 pounds in weight. Now, Sorry, he never took a picture, but just think of something, a locust, a giant locust that is 22 pounds. It must mean say it must have some meat on it. It must mean say big. Because if you buy a 10 pound bag of rice, or a 20 pound bag of rice, or a 20 pound bag of sugar or flour, or so, that's a heavy thing, you know. And with weight comes bigness, not true? My point is this. If there can be a 22 pound locust, in a normal side, they can be a locust as big as a horse, or as well as the locust can be a 22 pound, or it can be as small as a hand, no matter what size it is. All we know, this is what I believe. The lo this is the right word to conclude it. The locust, the demonic locust, are going to be the biggest ones you've ever seen. Whether it is bigger, um, like a horse, or bigger than the, the smallest locust persons I've ever seen, they will be seen. Because I want you to remember, we're living in the technological age and when those things are released people are going to be taking pictures and sending it and so forth and say look at this and remember they are not normal they are demonic so they are not going to be normal in any way so he, he, he just wanted to bring that to the table that we are not saying that they can't be as big as a horse and we are not saying that they must be as big as a horse either we are just saying that whatever size they will come in they are going to be seen. Amen? And they will reflect God's, um, you know, creativity and his, you know, just his splendor in using these demonic locusts. So, having said that, we're going to go to the sixth trumpet. All right? And let's stay right there. We're going to, and you can pop up the verses. We're going to read the verses. The sixth trumpet, which is the second war. We, the first war was the fifth trumpet now the second woe is the sixth trumpet and we're going to read verses 13 of revelation 9 verse 13 to the end all right the sixth trumpet don't know if we're going to get to the seventh one tonight but i am prepared to go there but if not we'll see what this one how far this one takes us so let's read together revelation 9 verse 13 to the end and the sixth angel sounded and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar which is before God saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates and the four angels were loosed 
which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for her to slay the third part of men and the number of the army no let me read verse 16 and just point out something that is obvious to most of us right now and the number of the army of the horsemen were 200 thousand thousand and i heard the number of them let's stop right there something seems missing not you miss amaran something seems missing it seems like almost disjointed you know and some people have said that because it just seems to jump from four angels that are loose to horsemen you say where's the narrative in that you know but you see it god is leaving it us leaving us up to making the connections and so i'm just going to say this from now if you agree with me you're, you're fine if you disagree with me you're still fine uh, you know because remember this is a sixth trumpet and it is blown they are not disconnected they all relate but the sixth trumpet is blown and it starts with four angels that are released and then it just stop talk about them and then just start talk about this army of horsemen my point is this i believe that the four angels are the leaders of this army of horsemen because they relate to each other it's not disjointed Narr narrative is just left out for us to assume this and isn't that a, 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 a fair assumption remember the fifth trumpet these the the locusts the demonic locusts they had a leader abaddon apollyon they they had a leader so this army this army i believe will have leaders and i believe the four angels are that so let's keep going and then we will return to it if you have any questions verse 17 and thus i saw the horses in the vision and then that sat on them having breastplates of fire and of jacinth and brimstone and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone by these three was the third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths for their power is in their mouths and in their tails for their tails were like unto serpents snakes and had heads and with them they do hurt and the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented not of the works of their hands that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood which neither can see nor hear nor walk neither repented they of their murders nor of their sorceries nor of their fornication nor of their thefts you remember i was praying on wednesday and i said for some people and pastor mark said something that effect too that some people will think that god is wicked what he did in the fifth trumpet of keeping people alive to stew in that because remember the fifth trumpet they, 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 these locusts will be stinging them but they will not die they are going to stew in it and then comes the sixth trumpet where you see people die I, I, in my prayer i was saying that if you notice how the two verses end the other chapter chapter nine these people deserved it because even seeing all of that they still never repented they, they still continued the bible made sure to tell you that what is what god is doing to people and judging people is because they deserve it and they don't they are not moved and changed by it instead some of them are going to end up as you know worshiping the antichrist so when god does his thing as was said i think it's sister terry did you use the word fear or justice or something that who said just somebody else said pat just he's just he's fair all right so let's go back to verse 13 and we are going to um, flesh out e verse 14, right? Well, verse 13, and the six angels sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God. We're going to skip to verse 14 now, which then unravels what is happening. So, yes, to the slide. Notice he says in verse 14, so the sixth angel which had the trumpet loose, um, he said, the, the, the voice said, loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. So it would seem that power was given to the sixth angel to loose the four angels in addition to his office of blowing the trumpet. 
But if you don't believe that he literally loosed them, so if the sixth angel did not literally loose these four angels, the meaning still is that the effect of his blowing the trumpet would be the same as if angels that had been bound should be suddenly loosed and allowed to go forth over the earth. Remember when we said this the last time about in the fifth trumpet, these demonic locusts were held in a position, the bottomless pit, until the time that God wanted them. It's the same thing for these four angels. Um, that's a good question. Uh, Mr. Clark asked if there are fallen angels. I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. However, however, I would go on to go on the side of they are angels of God not fallen. You know, and because he is using a, a lot of the angels to do his bidding. Ne not to, but nevertheless, the demonic locust were an example of him using the, 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 the demonic locust. But at the same time, I would want to err on the side of the, you know, we are called the angels of God. All right? Yeah. Yes. 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 Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and that, that, that's fine. That's fine. If, if anybody feels that it's a fallen angel, not, not going to fight on that because it says that they were bound. But they, they, you, you can't have some champion angels that, that are, in other words, they are, not, they are not dead, but they are just there for the time as this. All right? I'm coming. I see, go ahead. I see your hand there. And then after that, we go to the next slide. Go ahead, Omar. Yes. Um at this point in time, I would, as you would say, make the assumption that these are angels of God, not the fallen angels. Because remember, fallen angels are going to be under judgment. The, the dragon is going to be bound. And uh, as you mentioned, remember, God has some angels that have special purposes. Yeah. Just as how he has the seraphims at the throne. Yeah. And all they do is worship. Day and yeah. night, it says, yeah. forever, right? then a move. Um, mm -hmm. And he has messenger angels where, where whenever he needs to send a message, these are the angels that he uses. He has the archangels who are in charge of special um, groups of angels or special missions. So these angels are specifically there. So the idea of them being born is that they were confined and constrained from doing their work until mm -hmm. the time that they are supposed to work. Indeed. And now this is when he lets them go. You know, you have your, your, your guard dog. Yeah. And you chain him up when you're there home and people come in. But when at night time, you let him loose in the yard, see? Mm -hmm. This is their time now. This is this is what they were created for, and this is their time. So he lets them loose to do their thing. Indeed, yes, Pat. I have a scripture here to back up what um, Omar just said. Go ahead. It's in Genesis chapter three, verse twenty-four, when he sent Adam and Eve out of the garden. Yes. And he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the Eden of east of the garden of Eden cherubims. And a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Yeah. So they are stationed yes. there. That's why nobody can find that tree of life. That if it exists, then nobody can ever find that or even enter into it. So they are stationed for a purpose. And the same thing with the angels. But it says in the vicinity of the river Euphrates. Next slide, Pastor. Next slide. So the general meaning here is that in the vicinity of the river Euphrates, there were mighty powers. By the way, let me just add this, not on slide, which we are not seeing, which we cannot see, by the way. All right? There is no major tower somewhere where nobody can get into and everybody has seen. It's, these, are, these are invisible to the human eye. All right? So, but it tells you where they are, interestingly. All right, in the vicinity of the river, you, you see how God is being specific in the book of Revelation, by the way, how specific he is about things, right? There were mighty powers which had been bound or held in check, uh, which were now to be let loose upon the world, all right? Some power that seemed to be kept back by an invisible influence, of course, that influences God, was now suddenly let loose 
and allowed to accomplish the purpose of desolation mentioned in the subsequent verses which is why i believe that these four angels would be the leaders of the army all right everybody good so far keep going all right so verse 15 and i'll read and the four angels were loosed which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men so he gives you this um so that you see an hour and a day and a month and a year that is one year three weeks and five days or 391 days so as far as i'm concerned anything else that is going to be mentioned about the horsemen and what they do it would certainly seem that these horsemen led by these four angels are going to be let loose on the world for for one year three weeks five days huh 391 that's a good while you know because you remember these are special horsemen and you know you know sometimes i know that some people wonder if for instance when john saw something was it a tanker he didn't say a tanker even though i know that um flyer jets and uh, tankers did not exist in john's time he did tell you what he saw uh, he he told you he saw a horse or saw a horseman am i making sense so we are not to assume that in other words if john saw something beyond his time he he would have said something like this and i saw some kind of mechanism uh, uh, for want of a better word or some kind of metal metal ch chariot, metal or, you know, chariot. In, in other words right because john is not stupid john knows what a horse is am i making sense he says a horse because he saw a horse am i making sense he says a horse if he didn't recognize it this was past his age he would say something to describe what it looks like to him even though, though he doesn't know what it is so he said what he saw i saw horsemen all right my point is this i don't know if they are flying horsemen or regular riding horsemen but if they are regular riding horsemen it's going to take a while to cover the world because one third of the world's population will again be killed and it's going to take them a while because they're going to go across the world you know or the countries that they are designated to go and it's going to take a while and the bible is telling us that this is going to take a year three weeks and five days for them to do it because a lot of the times even though we see the details sometimes our imaginations don't sometimes our imaginations can i put it this way overlook the details and for us sometimes when we see what we're about to read these horsemen that are going to kill one third of the world sometimes all we think about it happening at 24 hours or it happening at three days am i making sense he tells us the time period for certain things like back to fifth trumpet he says they're going to torment the world for five months so when he says five months don't think five minutes <laughs> he tells you exactly what some of these things will do so they are going to slay the third part of men meaning the meaning here is that these angels will spread desolation over about a third part of the world and the desolation would be so widespread that it would seem to encompass a third of the world all right so when we get to verse 16 the angels are not oh sorry go ahead go ahead alicia you have a mic give her a mic for me now please yes oh yes maybe that should have been yes you're right that should have been a year four weeks and five days yes thank you for that thank you for that yes i definitely miss typed that one very good very good thank you so much one year four weeks five days or 391 days thank you for that all right any other anything else all right very good let's let's keep going so verse 16 now which i'll read and the number of the army of the horsemen 
I again believe that the angels are the leaders of this, but it jumps now to the persons who are really going to do the work here. The number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand, and I heard the number of them. Right? Now, he says the number of the armies of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand. That's another way of John saying that it's 200,000 times a thousand. All right? 200,000 times a thousand. That's how they spoke back in those days. So, 200,000 multiplied by 1,000 gives you 200 million. Because remember, they even remember the world's population by then would have de depreciated a bit, but it's still going to be probably billions in the world. So, 200 million sounds a lot to you, but they have grounds to cover. So it needs a lot of them. But they are still not going to be able to cover the population as fast as, as they would need to do damage. And so he says that there were 200 million horsemen. They were so numerous that John did not pretend to be able to estimate the number himself. This is something you need to note. For it was beyond his power of computation. But he heard it stated that there were 200 million of them. In other words, John was not the one who was estimating it. To say, and I saw one of people. Or I saw 200, it looked like about 200 million. He never estimated. It is not he the number came from. Remember, pay attention to details. He says, and I heard the number of them. In other words, I heard the computation. I heard the total. Somebody said it to me. This is not an assumption by John. He's telling you what he heard. So again, look at the specificity of God in just numbering his thing and doing this, you know. So it was 200 million horsemen. Good so far? Then verse 17. And thus I saw the horses in the vision. And then that sat on them, having breastplates of fire and of jacinth and brimstone. And the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions. And out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. So we'll get to the latter part of this verse. Let's break it in half. He describes what they were. They, they, so there were horses, but they were, and then that sat on them. I don't know. And I don't know if I missed this. If I missed it, let me know. But um, it didn't give much detail about who was riding it. No, sir? And I looked at the passage and I said, did I miss anything? It didn't give the detail of the rider. Because the rider is not the most important thing. This time around, it's the horses. But it is also saying that they had riders. Because it says, and then that sat on, on the horses... They, these are the persons. They, so they are dressed in military style. Right? So whoever these riders are, human or demonic or, or angelic, I don't know. The details were not given. But so for, for the intent and purposes of being um, general and being more what I'd call um, you know, neutral, these riders were decked like soldiers. Because it said they had on breastplates of fire and of jacinth and brimstone. Now, different commentators have different things to say about this. Some believe it is literal fire. And if it is literal fire, then these are not human beings. Not normal riders. But then the rest continues to say um, jacinth and brimstone. And most people believe that it is just describing the colors of their breastplate rather than a fiery breastplate. All right? So it says red, meaning, sorry, fire and jacinth and brimstone. Their breastplate, breastplate was like, you know, fire, jacinth and brimstone. All of these have, all of these that are mentioned, these elements have a color that is assigned to them. So it could very well be just describing their color of the breastplate. And fire, red is the color of fire. And some people say it can be orange depending on the type of fire. Some people say even the flame can be blue. All right? But usually red or orange, orange red is the color of fire. 
and blue jacent and by the way i only made that blue um there so that you could see the blue because i didn't want to use a darker blue but jacent is the, the, the colors there don't necessarily represent the real colors all right so the blue jacent is a dark blue Jacinth, Jacinth is a, um, a, you know, a kind of, kind of dead, dead, dead blue. <laughs> you know, it's a dark, very dark blue. All right? So, red is the color of fire. Blue is the color of Jacinth. And yellow is the color of brimstone. And another name for brimstone, if you check the word in the Greek, you're going to see the word sulfur. 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 All right? And sulfur is yellow. Anybody who does science, physics, and so forth, you know, you will see that chemistry, whatever that subject is, you will see that um, sulfur has a color which is yellow. But it's not bright yellow. I wanted to see the, so it's not bright yellow either. All right. But red, blue, yellow could very well be describing the color of their breastplate. But then that is not where we want to spend time on. It says in the latter part of the verse, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions. And out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. Next picture um, or slide which will show a picture, um, um, Pastor. So he says, the heads of the horses were like what? Lions. You remember the, the locusts? All right. So these were horses that's what i'm saying there's a main attribute here it's supposed to be a horse locust supposed to be a locust but a horse with a lion's head and then fire is three elements come out of the most right issued fire and smoke and brimstone all right fire smoke and brimstone all right by these verse 18 says by these three was the third part of men killed in other words a third of the population you know so next slide oh i have a picture here oh, i forgot about this picture that maybe again another artist depiction of what you know they think that this looks like it looks scary doesn't it yeah it looks scary by the way they are all scary you know the, the locusts are scary god designed these things to be scary in fact my brother who is a pastor was saying this to me well not necessarily to me to my sister and then she told me and i said you know that's an interesting observation that even some of the angels of god are not don't look pretty you know that right you're not you know you say pastor how could you say that some of them it describes them as beasts with two with six eyes it covered it. think of a beast with six eyes that there are some angels that don't look too pretty may i tell you that all right so maybe another day i'll bring out some description of some special angels that don't look so too pretty and some and the combination of some of these angels of god that have wings like an eagle head of i'm I a mean, head of this kind of creature and so forth he's doing the same thing with the, with the demonic um thing too all right so 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 this one could be a picture of what you know it might look like nobody can really cover it properly but let's let's move on it says in verse 18 by these three things referring to the fire the smoke and the brimstone right by these things by these three, three things were people killed so either the fire that comes out of their mouth is going to just consume some or the smoke you all know this if you inhale too much smoke it can suffocate you and then brimstone is sulfur it can suffocate you as well and by the way we have no reason to doubt that all of these the, the two other elements smoke and brimstone we have no reason to believe that they are cool if the fire is with it it means that they are also hot hot smoke hot sulfur and so it says by these three elements so if the fire doesn't kill some the smoke will if the smoke doesn't kill some the sulfur will you know so those immense numbers of horsemen would sweep over the world and a full third part of the race of men would seem to fall before them right so they are going to this is the second war remember the first war people didn't die but we are we we can safely say that by the time you get to the second war some of them who survived the five months onslaught of the locusts 
<laughs> yeah. all, all of them who survived the five month onslaught. Me, me just being careful with my words. <laughs> you can okay. go ahead and say all. All right. But me just being careful with my words because, you know, maybe the, the locusts would have hit the entire world. And so it can't be that all will die. It, because people will still live. Are you make, is that making sense? The third part of the world. Everybody would seem that if, as long as it's not God's people, that they would suffer under the hands of the fifth trumpet, but they wouldn't die. But when the sixth trumpet comes, some of them will die. All right? A third part of the world will die. So, and it tells you by what means. This is very important for you to note because the next verse, we're at verse 18, right? The next verse. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails. Now, you need to make a distinction here. For their tails were like unto serpents or snakes and had heads and, which, and with them they do hurt. Now, go back to that picture past Evan, sorry. You see, that's why this arch is Judas. Because of what was said. Their tails were like serpents but they had heads so it's not the tail of the serpent that the creature had these horses had it's the head of the serpent that's why this is important to notice the details here it cause if you if you didn't see the verse say and had heads then you could interpret that this creature had a tail like a serpent's tail but what it is saying is that this creature had a tail of a serpent's head. Does that sound familiar to what happened with the locusts? They had tail of scorpion. But notice something else as well. From all indications, the serpent heads will not kill them. You don't agree? It didn't say kill them. It told you what killed them. It told you already what will kill them. These three elements. Why is the Bible so specific? These three elements. By verse 18. By these three was the third part of men killed. And the three things are fire, smoke, and brimstone. Not four. So even though you are hearing that there is a serpent there's a, there, there's a creature with a tail like a serpent and it would hurt them. It won't kill them. It tells you what killed them. Does, does that make sense? If you say kill them, then you're going to say a four. It's not four, it's three. But what it is doing is similar to what Trumpet 5 was doing. Those who don't die from the fire and the brimstone and the smoke, they are going to be hurt by the serpent, by the horse tail. <laughs> horse tail. So there are still people who are left alive are still going to be suffering one way or the other. Am I making sense? Are still going to be suffering. But it won't kill them. It tells you what kills them. So we're not to assume that the serpent is a fourth thing. It tells you what kills them. But it says, and they do hurt. <laughs> they do hurt. Everybody with me so far? So, um, verse 20. Verse 20 and 21 i'll read that together and there's a slide that will finish it up and the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented plagues could we be referring to the serpent bites you know because remember that these are um these are different things that god would have called plagues serpent bite when the, the, the when when the serpents were unleashed um in the wilderness and it, it called it plague at one point so the, the, the plague, the serpents, when the rest of the men which were not killed, those who survived by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk, neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorcerers, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. In other words, in a nutshell, this last slide encompasses what verse 20 and 21 says and the rest of the people who were not put to death by these evils were not turned from the works of their hands but went on giving worship to evil spirits 
and images of gold and silver and brass and stone and wood which have no power of seeing or hearing or walking so they continue to worship false gods they didn't repent of their murders nor so these some of these it is listing out some of the sins of these people you know because people will ask why is god doing this to innocent people these were not innocent people the innocent people are the people who would be saved are the innocent people are the church that would be gone and we yourself we call ourselves at times we don't do some innocent thing but these were not innocent people these were not babes in christ they didn't repent of their murders nor of their sources nor of their sexual immorality nor of their thefts pastor you had something to say okay all right so it is telling you why they um deserve this judgment because it describes some of the things they were guilty of any questions or comments all righty then since we are at 8 15 we can we can continue then all right so that was the sixth trumpet no there was an interlude in chapter 10 so the seventh trumpet is not found in chapter 10 of revelation it's found in chapter 11 and it doesn't even pick up at verse 1 it picks up at verse 15 and goes to verse 19 so let's look at the seventh and final trumpet which is the third woe now i want you to read this with me keenly because this is the seventh trumpet and it's supposed to be called the third woe but when you read verse 15 to 19 it doesn't seem very woeful so read it with me with that thought in mind that i just provoked you with because the second and the first war or the first and the second war you could see the magnitude of what they were but then this one it almost after hearing the first and the second war it this third war seems tame so what we're going to have to do is unearth what is so woeful about this so let's go verse 15 to 19 of revelation 11 15 to 19 says and the seventh angel sounded and there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our lord and of and of his christ and he shall reign forever and ever that don't sound too bad you know you're nothing demonic you know nobody not dead you know so it's all right you're waiting right you said wait for it where's the war and the four and twenty elders which sat before god on their seats fell upon their faces and worshiped god that no sound too bad remember you know is the bible set us up for these wars and you know? i said three more wars to come trumpet five six and seven so you're expecting something even more cataclysmic climatic and all you're hearing right now is ruling and reigning and worshiping it doesn't sound too bad it's almost like it sounds tame verse 17 saying we give thee thanks O lord god almighty which art and wast and art to come because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and has reigned and the nations were angry and thy wrath is come now it's getting to something and the time of the dead that they should be judged and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants put that not sound too bad either you know uh -huh. and reward unto thy servants and uh this the prophets and to the saints and them that fear thy name small and great and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth no that no that, no, that sound like sound like a war verse 19 is where we'll stop and the temple of god was opened in heaven and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament and there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and earthquake and great hail i hope you were paying attention to the narrative here because this this, this seventh trumpet or third war it confused me for a while because i was really in the, i was really looking for more i was really looking for more drama i was really looking for you know some more of what happened in sixth and fifth trumpet and it took me a while to figure it out because why would they call this a war it sounds tame in comparison to trumpet six and five 
Why would they call this a war? What is so woeful about it? We're not going to finish this today. But I needed to get this out of the way first. Because I wanted you to see. And I'm going to read over verse 18. And then I'm going to um, read about three slides. And we'll stop there. But we'll let, let's read verse 18 again. And the nations were angry. And thy wrath is come. And the time of the dead that they should be judged. And that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, unto the saints, and them that fear thy name. So there's a reward thing also going on here. It seems mixed up, not true. And shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. And remember earlier, it was talking about his kingdom to come and he shall reign forever and ever. This is all the seventh trumpet. And what I'm about to say hopefully makes sense to you by what you just read. So bring that slide up, Pastor Evans. I want you to even look at the verses in your Bible as I read this out. The seventh trumpet, and the, or otherwise called the third woe judgment, brings about the return of Christ to the earth and the subsequent destruction of all hostile powers at the conclusion of Armageddon. The seventh trumpet chronologically reaches to Christ's return. Therefore, the seventh trumpet introduces and includes, listen to me carefully now, the seven bold judgments to come. Because remember, the seventh trumpet introduces the seven bold judgments, you know, uh, of the wrath of God revealed in chapter 16. A related view has the third war span clear to the end of the world and judgment. Based on what we just read. Next slide. The seventh trumpet, which includes the third war, seems to extend to and through the millennial kingdom. Because didn't it say that his reign and he shall, he shall reign forever and ever? It, it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wide expanse. It's not just something that is going to happen now and done. It's not just destruction. But the seventh trumpet and third war is going to encompass many things and a long time period. Am I making sense so far? Based on what we just read. All right? So, the seventh trumpet which includes the third war seems to extend to and through the millennial kingdom and the end of the world down to, but not including the final judgment of the great white throne. So, next slide. Other views exist on what the third woe is. And there are also many views on how to read Revelation. So each view will have a distinct take on what is meant and when it ends. But from the points noted and the scripture read, it seems that when the set of events that begin with the seven trumpets sounding and lead to Christ's return are over, then the third woe will be passed or is passed as well. That's the only way we're going to make sense of this. Because it doesn't, if you read it through, one more time looking at the Bible, it doesn't speak to just one event. It encompasses a number of events. From Jesus' reign to rewards of the saints and destruction of the earth. But the entire earth cannot be destroyed at this point because there'll be nothing for the seven bowls to take place. And, 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 am I making sense? So this means the seven war is very deep. You have to really look into it. The seven war, sorry, seven trumpet, third war, seven trumpet, third war is very deep. It's not that it is saying that if you took it at face value, when it says in verse 18, and shouldest destroy them, we, dis we destroy the earth. That means that everything would have done right there, sir. Revelation would have stopped at chapter 11. So it is something that expands into the seven bowls and Armageddon and destruction of the earth. It's wider than we realize. That's why it's called even a war. Because it is going to encompass destruction of the earth too and Armageddon and all of that. Does that make sense to you all? Because that's the only way we can make sense of it, you know. It's deeper and wider than, than we think. This war is special. This seventh trumpet, third war, is indeed special. So when we come back on Wednesday, we're going to still do justice, but we wanted to paint an overview of it. So we're going to come back on Wednesday, and we're going to look at each verse. 
verse 15 to 19 in its uh, um, each verse on its own but you had to look at the bigger picture or else you'll be confused and it certainly confused me <laughs> and i said what on earth is this saying all right any questions comments before we wrap up for today all right so we'll stop it there worthy indeed you are jesus you are our creator and not just a creator but a creative creator you have created all things all beings everything for your purpose and for your pleasure and looking at these judgments so far it reminds us of even things created that have not even um, achieved their purpose yet and so God you do anything you want because you are God and you are almighty and if there is one thing that's certain anybody who doesn't give you the glory now everybody will give you the glory one day that's why all created things will bow before you because you created everything and the entire creation dead and alive will indeed still give homage to the creator of the universe and space and everything in one so jesus we will do so willingly because we love you and we acknowledge you and we appreciate you continue to bless our minds with your word continue to just enlighten us by your word in jesus name we pray amen <laughs>